Hello students, in this video we'll derive an integral representation for the Riemann zeta function. Let's recall that the Riemann zeta function is zeta of s, and it's the sum, n goes from 1 to infinity, 1 over n to the power s, and this is defined for s strictly larger than 1. And we're eventually going to extend this function to the complex plane. We've already encountered this function in our study of Fourier analysis, right? And so, of course, we we saw in previous videos that zeta of 2, for example, zeta of 2 is pi squared over 6, right? And we're interested in finding other values of the zeta function and the other properties of this function over here, this Riemann zeta function, okay? All right. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to prove the following. So prove that zeta of s is s, the integral from 1 to infinity, of the greatest integer less than or equal to x, x to the s plus 1, dx. Okay, so how do we see this? Of course, here, this function over here is the greatest integer less than or equal to x. Okay, so for example, 2.4 is equal to 2. So it's the integer floor. All right, excellent. So how do we prove something like this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to note that this is exactly equal to just s times the sum, n goes from 1 to infinity, the integral from n to n plus 1, the floor of x over x to the s plus 1 dx, OK? And so now what we're going to do is we're going to note that between this floor function between n and n plus 1 is exactly equal to n. So this is going to be equal to s, the sum n goes from 1 to infinity, and then this is going to be the integral from n to n plus 1 of just an n over x to the s plus 1 dx, right? And so we'll, we'll um, do these integrals over here, so this is going to be the sum. n goes from 1 to infinity. I'm going to raise the power, so this is x to the negative s minus 1. We'll raise this when you integrate this. It's going to integrate to x to the negative s over negative s, right? So the s's are going to cancel out over here. So these integrands are going to become what? They're going to become n over x to the s. From what to what? From, and it's negative, of course, from n to n plus 1. Great. And so this is just the sum, n goes from 1 to infinity of just a negative n. I'm going to flip the limits of integration over here. So this is going to be the n, and then I'll have a 1 over um, n to the s minus 1 over n s to the n plus 1, like so. And now let's look at the first couple terms of this series over here. So what we're going to get is we're going to get what? So I think this, is, uh, this term over here is going to telescope, right? Uh, that's an n plus 1, excuse me, sorry. That's going to be an s plus 1, but it's going to be an n x to the n plus 1. So typo there. n plus 1. n plus 1 to the s, like that. Great. And so now what do we have over here? So when n is equal to 1, the first term over here is going to be a 1, and then I'm going to have a 1 over 1 to the s minus 1 over 2 to the s. The next term is going to be a what? It's going to be a 2, and then a 1 over what? And then a 1 over... 2 to the s, then a 1 over, th minus 1 over 3 to the s, okay? Then plus what? Plus 3, 1 over 3 to the s, minus 1 over 4 to the s, like so. And so let's see what we hit over here. So we have a 1 over 1 to the s, then I have a negative 1 over 2 to the s, and I have two of those things over here, so that's going to be a total of what? If we keep adding all these things up, this becomes what? This becomes just a 1 over 1 to the s, 1 over 2 to the s, Let's look at the three term. I have a two. I have negative two of them, and I have three of them over here. So this pattern persists. It's, it's I can sum by parts and get this one over three to the s, etc. And that's just exactly just the sum. N goes from one to infinity of one over n to the power s, and that proves this result over here that this is the representation for zeta. Now a classic trick that is done with this to, rep to illustrate the singularity of these zeta functions is the following. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to write this as zeta of s is s the integral from 1 to infinity of the floor of x, but I'm going to write that as what? I'm going to write that as the floor of x 
plus minus x itself over x to the s plus 1 dx over here, right? And so now I'm going to write this as the first term, we have that positive x over here. So this is going to be s, the integral from 1 to infinity. If I have x over s to the, it becomes a dx over x to the s. Okay, great. And then minus the integral from 1 to infinity with an s of what? Of x minus the floor of x. That's just the fractional part of x. Yes, right? Now look at this integral over here. What's this, this going to integrate to over here? That's going to be s, x to the negative s plus 1 over negative s plus 1 from 1 to infinity. Okay? And so the top limit's going to die. It's going to be 0. But when I plug in x equals 1 on the bottom limit, this is going to be a negative. So what's going to happen over here is we're going to have a s over s minus 1. So in other words, that's the bottom limit, so I can just pass that negative through. So we're on the bottom limit, so I can pass the negative to the denominator, and we'll get a s minus 1. So this is equal to s over s minus 1, and then minus s minus s, the integral from 1 to infinity, and then x minus the integer part is called the fractional part of x. That's the fractional part of x x to the s plus 1 dx. And this is a very, very useful expression over here because we can see as s gets closer to 1, we see exactly the structure of the singularity of the Riemann zeta function at s equals 1. Because I know when, when, as s tends to 1, it tends to harmonic series. And so we exactly see the structure of the singularity from this formula over here. So this is one of our, one, a very useful representation of the Riemann zeta function. And it sort of exhibits the symmetry between 0 and 1 and gives us the idea that there might be something that's funny happening on the critical line s equals 1 half in the common we extend this to the complex plane. So these are two integral representations of the Raymond zeta function. Thank you very much.